Hi everyone and welcome back to Goody's Kitchen and if you are new here then hello and welcome. My name is Alexis and I post two videos a week on a Tuesday and a Thursday at 7am. So if you love a recipe video like this one and you want to see more then please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and now I'm going to share with you how to make my delicious oven baked lentil spag bowl. As I just mentioned today I want to share with you how to make my delicious lentil spag bowl. Now as I say in a lot of my recipes this one is really easy to do but I promise you it is really easy to make this one. The other day I was in the kitchen and it was quite warm and I was going to cook a lentil spag bowl on the stove but I decided I didn't want to stand by the stove for hours cooking this spag bowl so I put it into the oven instead and the results were amazing and of course I had to share the recipe with you. So here is how to make my delicious oven baked lentil spag bowl. Firstly I'm going to preheat my oven to 160 degrees. Grab myself a large pan and I'm going to put this onto a high heat on my hob and I'm going to add a little bit of oil to the base of that pan like so and I'm going to leave the pan to heat up. The oil has started to smoke so what I'm going to do is I am going to add in one onion that I have peeled sliced and diced. I'm going to put that into the base of my pan like so and I'm going to fry the onion now for about uh, five minutes or so or until it just becomes so it starts to soften and it becomes clear and see-through as well. The onions have started to soften and they've also started to become clear and see-through as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in my garlic now. So I've peeled and sliced two whole cloves of garlic and I'm just going to pop those into the pan as well. And I'm going to fry these until these start to go a golden brown colour. So probably for about a minute or so and then hopefully they should just start to go a lovely golden brown colour. So the garlic has been frying for about two minutes and it has started to turn a golden brown colour as you saw there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in um, about 100 grams of butternut squash. So I'm going to add that to the pan as well. And then I'm also going to add in one pepper, one red pepper that I have taken the top from, removed the core and the seeds and the green stalk as well and then I just sliced and diced the flesh so I'm going to add that in as well and I'm going to fry these now, now these probably won't get that soft because they are quite chunky but you just basically want to heat them through so they go nice and soft when they're in the oven so they soften quite nicely so yes I'm just going to heat these through for about a minute or so now the pan is getting slightly too warm as well so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn the heat down slightly and I'm going to add a little bit of water to the base of the pan so that nothing sticks as I'm cooking it. So I'm just going to continue to fry these vegetables. I've been frying them for about two minutes and they haven't really got softer but you can feel they're slightly softer so I think that's good enough. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in uh, one peeled and grated courgette and one peeled and grated carrot as well. So I'm going to add that to the base of my pan like so and I'm going to fry these now. And the courgette and the carrot probably will soften slightly to be honest. As they're grated they do tend to um, 
soften a lot easier than the pepper and the butternut squash. I have grated butternut squash before in the past, but it does give you quite an arm make, I have to say. Um, I love to cook and I love to experiment, but there are some things about cooking that I really don't like to do. And grating a butternut squash, I think I've decided is one of those. So yeah, I might prefer to peel and chop them. Plus, once they've been cooked down, butternut squash tends to dissolve in a sauce anyway, so it doesn't really matter too much. And I do like a few bigger chunky bits in my meals as well. If you wanted the butternut squash smaller than this, then you are more than welcome to cut it smaller, but I do like chunky bits of butternut squash, I have to say. Um, the sunshiny colour really makes me smile. Butternut squash and carrots make me smile, I don't know why. They just do. So yes, anyway, I'm going to continue to fry this for a further minute or so now. So everything has cooked beautifully in the pan. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my lentils to this. And I've got about 200 grams of lentils. I'm making the meal as if it serves four people. It's actually serving Howard, myself and my son this evening. And then I will have the leftovers tomorrow for lunch. So yeah, um, I'm just going to continue to fry this now. Until probably, well, probably for another minute or so. I just want to heat the lentils up as well. Um, I want to warm them through so that they cook a bit better when I put them into the oven. So the lentils have heated through now and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in my tomatoes to this dish and I'm also going to add in some vegetable stock as well. I've got about 400 mils of vegetable stock and the trick I like to use is I like to pour the vegetable stock into the tomato tin because then that gets rid of any excess juice from the tomato tin. And then I'm just gonna pour the rest of the chi uh, chicken stock, vegetable stock in as well. And I'm gonna, I'm going to even, push all of the ingredients down from the sides of the pan so that everything hopefully cooks beautifully in this pan. And I've got some bay leaves here that I'm going to add in as well. Bay leaves give it a lot of flavour. My dad always used to use them when he made the spaghetti bolognese. So um, I do like to use them. Uh, and they're also really good for the stomach as well. If you're suffering with stomach aches, then bay leaves are the way to go. And then I've also got um, about a teaspoon of dried mixed herbs that I've added in as well. So I'm just going to move these ingredients round and then finally to that I'm going to add some salt and some pepper as well so I'm going to add a couple of pinches of salt to this like so and then I'm going to add a little bit of pepper as well not too peppery obviously I'm serving this to a little one who doesn't like pepper too much but if he doesn't know it's in there then he doesn't mind <laughs> so yeah, now I'm going to put the lid on and I'm going to pop this into the oven. Or well, actually might bring it to the boil first. I'm going to bring this to the boil and then I will pop it into the oven. So I'm just going to bring this to the boil now. Finally, the ingredients have come to the boil. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop the lid back on and I'm going to put this into the oven for about an hour. The spag bowl, well, the sauce for the spag bowl has been in the oven for about an hour now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this out and add some kale and some basil and some pasta and that will be our dinner done. As I just mentioned, I'm going to add some kale and some basil to my sauce now. And I've cooked off some split green pea pasta as well. And I'm going to add the pasta to the sauce and not the other way round. And then I will mix these ingredients together like so. And that is our dinner 
Done. That's how we make my delicious oven baked lentil spag bowl and that recipe I will link in the description box below for you. As I mentioned earlier I'm going to be having this for my dinner this evening and it smells so good as I always say I can't wait to eat it. So for now that's it from me. Thank you so much for watching. Please feel free to give me a big thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and please feel free to leave any comments below and please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. See you all soon. Bye.